But if you go to Poland and go to the northeast corner of Poland, and uh, right before you get into Lithuania, there's this little piece of dirt up there called the Shawaki Gap. Uh, some refer to it as the SK Gap. It's 63 kilometers wide. And on the west side of that is a little place called Kaliningrad. And on the east side of that is a little country called Belarus. Um, and there's, it's long been known that uh, there is a, a desire or there or potentially could be a desire uh, for one of our uh, certain adversaries that are out there that may want to close that particular gap between Belarus and, and uh, Kaliningrad. They call it the land bridge. And they think it would take them about uh, 24 to 48 hours to do that. They would do it with roughly 28 to 30 battle groups, so 8 to 10 divisions worth. Uh, by the time we were able to respond to that, it would be a significant amount of time. <clears throat> Given the, the short distance between those two areas, they could be there for a significant amount of time digging a pretty good, deliberate defense um, associated with that, with really no assailable flank on either one. And so that's a pretty big problem set if we were to have to go back in and try and reverse that, restore international boundaries and borders and everything else, and we move to the prevail phase of a, a conflict in that part of the world. Um, so there would be a need at some point after you had set the conditions and got your forces in place to ultimately probably have to do some type of large-scale penetration with a pretty elaborate breach to move through that particular gap. And the level of synchronization across multiple corps and multiple divisions on our side, multiple divisions on the other side, just like the D-Day analogy, think about the forces involved in that, now multi-domain, a joint combined coalition operation, uh, the planning and, and rehearsing and, and level of, of uh, synchronization it would require to pull that off would be every bit as complicated as what it was on June 6th of uh, 1944. But on the back end of that, when you get into the exploit, the pursuit, let's finish this thing. On the other end of it, just like the LGOPs, you're going to have to go back the other way. You're going to expect people because you're not going to know and understand the chaos that, that's going to exist on the back end. But if you really want to rapidly finish that fight, you want folks to take the initiative. You want them to move out uh, to the sound of guns and finish that fight on the back end of that thing and consolidate the gains that uh, you would have gained to that point. So you get both ends of that spectrum. And so there is no, that's why we've brought back command and control. And command and control is not a dirty word. It does not mean micromanagement. It does not mean over, um, overlooking too, too far to a degree that, that you've squashed initiative. It really kind of depends on the situation and what effect you're trying to achieve. There are times where you want to bring mass at the decisive point. And then there's other times where you want people in the exploitation or, in, let's say, in the movement up to that. We had disconnected comms, but we understood the broader purpose there may be a time that you have to do it both in route and on the backside. And so there is no cookie cutter answer. We've got to be mature enough and understand each other enough and trust each other enough to make sure that folks are doing the right thing.